Hi. Uh, last time we were talking about doing 60-foot Bachman conversions, and this time we're going to talk about doing model power single truck and trailer conversions. Uh, the first conversion we're talking about is of this car. This is a model power Brill used originally by the Toronto Street Railways, as they made the models of, and it ran with this type of mechanism. Of course it was running with the sides on, so you're looking at something that looks approximately like this. You can find these uh, quite reasonably, usually about 20 bucks for the pair, so it comes with this one. And the trailer, and they just they wind up hooking up approximately like this with a drawbar in between. So usually these cars are these cars are come powered with this open frame motor driving worm gear that turns around and works the uh, the gears that run the run the car. A lot of times these things are replaced. Uh, was it Northwest Short Line makes a replacement motor? You have to drill out the uh, worm gear, slides the whole thing in. Literally, you screw the strap back onto it, and away you go. Uh, I didn't, I didn't go that way on the one I've, I've been rebuilding. So we got these two. Those are the old. So now what we do is in with the new. The new car, some slight modifications. Doorways were all been replaced with Brill bifolds. And the chassis has been replaced with a Bandai B. Uh, power source, little power truck, uh, four wheels powered. On the uh, inside there's a motor and the motor's got two sets of leads. Uh, one, both were originally set up so they would touch the brass strips so they're picking up on both sides. What I've done on mine is I've actually taken the strip on one, the, the lead on one side and bent it across. Both brass strips were picking up from, uh, from the ground. I mean, picking up from all four wheels. The other one, which is right here, goes up to the, the pole mounted on the roof. And that gives us the, uh, the pole-based operation for a live overhead. I also went through and we had to even up the chassis by putting in some strips and putting in some guides on the inside of the, the frame. There's a little uh, white metal weight that I have in there temporarily to see how this is all going to pan out in terms of... Uh, the amount of weight needed to get the car running the way it's supposed to be. And then we have the frame underneath. One of the things I did find out doing this is that the frame itself doesn't seem to work that well with uh, normal glues. So what happens is, is that this, I've tried doing it with both cryocyanate and uh, other glues for plastic. They all just peel right off. So what I did was I took a pencil tipped soldering iron and melted in between them to hold those pieces on. And then this piece goes on nicely underneath. And this, the only other changes we made is to cover up the cut in the front of the car, put a nice new fender on it. There we go, on both sides, and the new steps. Again with a, uh, a poll from Ventures by Eric. So now that we've got like a relatively stock conversion, you know, not very much being done to the body except for replacing the doors, we can go to a more radical change. Here's the original car with the side on it. If you wind up cutting the side off, you wind up with this type of situation. Now this reminds us of the Bachman conversion where you pull all the sides out and leave the ends in the roof. This time though, I was going through some of my my kits I haven't built. I found a a Roundhouse Overton car, which is now Athern. Uh, this car, the whole body, the whole box, completely stock. All I do is add in the weight and put the windows back in. The frame, I turned around and I wound up cutting the front and back porches off. 
So there were two porches with steps to get up into the car itself, but we cut those back so they would be flush underneath the uh, the uh, the box itself. A really scary thing is is that that frame fits perfectly over the roof. And this gives us a whole other series of ideas because the Overton cars come as the, the baggage car. I'm pretty sure there's a combine and I know there's a coach. So now we've got a whole other series of cars that we can either do up as, as eight wheel cars or we can do them up using the, uh, the Bandai motor and then we can turn around and turn them into single truck cars or as what we're going to do with this one is to leave it with the four wheels that were underneath it before and convert it into a trailer so that this the windows are going to get boarded up and uh, we're just going to use it as a freight trailer but that also means that I need another one of these to pull it with so or an, another freight motor to pull it with so more and more things to do the other thing as usual with these wonderful little beings is that they make a an edge it's right on top of where the roof is that allows us to take the entire uh, monitor roof off and turn it into a into a uh, just a single turtle back roof and uh, gives us a whole other series of cars that can be made out of this so that is what I'm doing with a uh, model power cars uh, another whole series that I've been looking at to go along with this is Roundhouse also made the Overton series of cars which were about 50 feet in length probably about this much longer the nice thing with those is there were actually four different five different cars made there was a coach an observation a parlor car a diner car and a combine and and those are really neat because of the way the windows look in the parlor car they have asymmetric windows both sides of the car so you can actually know what the interior look like on the dining car the windows are set up for face-to-face -face four seats so that the windows are bigger and grouped differently so there's a whole another plethora of sides that you can cut apart along the lines of taking apart these uh, these old-timer uh, 1860 Bachman cars to get different window spacings and everything else those will give us a whole other series of windows to work with which would in turn multiply the number of different versions that we can uh, we can work through uh, another thing I wanted to show you today was the work I've been doing on a miniatures by Eric this is one of his uh, lakeshore uh, bodies for a lakeshore uh, freight motor so it's typical uh, well-made resin body except this one uses a TM4 Tomix chassis with some modifications this is how a lot of the Japanese mechanisms work you wind up having the motor, you wind up having a flywheel, and you wind up having a power truck with a gear tower right up in there. This one I've actually cut the sides off of because they needed to be narrower. And again, we've got the, the, the leads for the motor right there. Made the edges on the inside of the, uh, the shell for it. And then this one, again, drops in nice and tight. Trucks look right. Still a little more detail work to be done on this to, to get this thing to all sit the way we want it to and to get uh, extra weight on this car. This car is very, very light as it stands right now. But this is a fantastic car. This goes along with the shell that Eric also makes for the Bachman car. 
and this is this is uh, generic inner urban for the Bachmann car and with a little machining on both sides it comes right in and out and turns into a pretty little car uh, again we find more and more things we can do with a with a Bachmann power chassis because it's nice and heavy tracks well and uh, it uh, it does the job. Easily parts are easily replaceable, as we showed before. It's two screws, and the whole thing comes apart. So, and that's where we're looking at right now. Uh, seeing it is around Christmas, my Christmas list. Well, it had an awful lot of Japanese power units on it. Uh, but uh, some of the things I want to move forward with next year is doing some uh, snowplow removal equipment, I mean snow removal equipment. I have a very, very soft spot in my heart for a lot of the uh, the Taunton single single truck plows, the Wasson single truck plows, the Brill single truck plows, uh, the uh, McGuire uh, sweepers, a lot of the home built sweepers and things like that. So I think that will be the next next thing that will wind up being done. The other thing is is that uh, one other upcoming episode I want to do is stringing wire and working through. Uh, how the wire goes together on a layout like this and on the layout like I'm building and give you guys a video tour of that uh, of that layout so until next time uh, this is Ted Roy and uh, have a good afternoon <laughs>